Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story. Sometimes, when you're young, you think you need to be following certain milestones, buying a house, getting married, having babies, but it, it doesn't work out that way for everyone. Today on our space, a marriage based on secrecy is no marriage at all. My soon-to-be ex-wife cheated on me, ruining a six-plus-year relationship. Her life is in shambles now, and I'm happy about it. This is a long story, but I'll try my best to make this short. We'll have to make multiple parts, though, to get full picture though. My soon-to-be ex-wife, who we will call Y, and I got married January 2020. I was 22 years at the time, and Y was 21. We got married in secret, only our close friends knew. At this time, we were living on campus at our university in Miami, both coming from two countries away and where our families lived as well. As soon as we got married, it was a toxic nightmare. For starters, she was secretly texting her ex-boyfriend from high school, who we will call Jay. She stated they were just friends now, but this didn't sit right with me as this person was also her first time. I'm not the type of person to go into someone's phone as I wanted to trust her. However, she started trying her hardest to hide her phone screen from my point of view and whenever I touched her phone, she would go crazy. At some point, I was able to figure out her passcode and check her messages. However, I wasn't able to find any proof to follow up on this. Fast forward, March of 2020. The pandemic hits and everyone is forced to move back home. We were in a weird position as we still hadn't told our families so we wore our rings in secret. Everything was seemingly okay until the first week of April of 2020. She just randomly stated she wanted a divorce. It shattered my heart to hear that as I cried and begged her to stay. I tried asking where did I go wrong, or if I wasn't doing enough for her. She just stated she didn't love me anymore and that she wasn't the one for me. For about a week, I was trying my best to save our marriage. I was at her mercy to try to make things work out, but she's extremely stubborn. At the end of that rough week, I decided to finally accept that she doesn't want to be with me anymore. It was hard to accept, but I figured we shouldn't drag this along anymore. I only asked her to return the wedding rings I gave her. However, she refused to give them back as she stated it was a gift for her, and she was entitled to keep them. Legally speaking, she may have been right. However, I didn't realize she deserved to keep them as we were no longer going to be together. The rings were real, and I was only a payment plan for them for about three years, with only four months in so far. We argued about this over the phone to the point I hung up and cried to myself in bed. My mother asked what was going on. I confessed everything to her, and she held me in her arms and told me everything was going to be okay. The next day, we both went to Wise home to where we confronted her mother and told the truth to her as well. It became an argument between her mothers, with Y still upsurge refuses to see me, but was texting me asking what the hell was going through my mind, getting our families involved. It was then agreed by our mothers that the rings would be given back to me, but on another day. About two days later, I get a call while at work from Y. She was crying stating that her mother was kicking her out because she got married in secret. She stated she still loved me as willing to give us another try, agreeing to cut off Jay, and that we should move in together and live as a married couple. Being the idiot who was in love at the time, I rushed out of work to meet up with her, and then we immediately started looking into apartments in the area. I was able to get us an apartment that was fairly cheap due to the pandemic and the move-in date was within three days. When I got home, I told my parents the news, and my mother was not happy about this. She explained that I was making a mistake. That I need to rethink all of this. My father was disappointed, but stated it's my life, my choice. For the next few days, my friends helped me move things from my place and I barely talked to my parents within those days. It was heartbreaking from my mother the most and hurt me seeing my mother upset as well. First day in. I felt like a marriage was finally moving in the right direction, and I was finally feeling that happiness. I was feeling before she told me she wanted to divorce me. However, 
that happiness did not last long. A few weeks after moving in, we get invited out for some drinks. And when we get back home, I went through her phone to find conversations between her and a different ex, who we will call E. The message has went as far as around the time she asked for a divorce, and this made my legs crumble. She was passed out on the bed. However, I woke her up by splashing water on her and started screaming at her. She was confused as she was still tipsy, but I was very furious and yelled at her for over two or three hours. At one point, I demanded her to leave as she was starting to come back to her senses. She began swinging at me and chasing me around the apartment, actually punching me a few times and clawing at me. I'm not a violent person at all. I took the abuse and just locked myself in the room to keep her away from me. She started crying and begging me to forgive her. To the point she was on her knees and stated she would do anything to make up for it. Just began arguing and then slowly talking about the situation through the bedroom door. Eventually, we both calmed down and went to bed as it was 4 a.m. when this was happening. I didn't sleep, however. And when 7 a.m. came around, she woke up with only half the memory from what happened last night. I yelled everything back to her again, but this time, she was sober enough to know what was going on and again pleaded for me to stay. She cried stating she had nowhere else to go. In that moment, I hated her very much as I feel she stole me from my family, my friends, and my life. About what I saw in the messages, there was nothing that stated they've done anything physical, at least from what was texted. However, there was conversations that had sexual tensions, such as her calling E sexy, and E stating they should make a video together, which I still considered cheating. After further arguing, I told her as long as she promises, nothing happened between her and E, I better not see her talking to Eva again, or I will leave her this time. She pleaded that nothing ever happened. And during the same conversation, I asked if anything that happened between her and Jay, she paused and said, no. It was at that moment that made me want to investigate this further. My dad told me that this was only the beginning of what was to come next and turn my world upside down. I'll explain more on this another day. You got was right up. When we're wearing those rose-colored glasses, it's hard to see who's hurting us in people's true intentions. Do you think Y was wanting to be a secret marriage? So that she could mess around behind your back? What was the point of the secret marriage? Did you know your parents wouldn't approve? Did you subconsciously know that it was a bad move and that maybe she wasn't the best person for you? So you kept it a secret to sort of hide that guilt it seems like both of you are quite toxic together. Fights tend to escalate. Despite your parents being disappointed in your choices, it's refreshing to know that they support you through the thick and thin. Part 2. Following my previous post, we are now in May of 2020. When I asked if anything happened between her and Jay, where Y reluctantly responded no. It was a way she answered that made me suspicious. To add on a little bit more, when we first moved in April of 2020, I was working at a call center about an hour away from our apartment from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. She was not working due to her job being closed, so I had to start doing Uber Eats, Postmates, and DoorDash, which would usually be 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. after work or whenever on my days off from work. Also, after the first night we moved in, I was given a cold shoulder from Reverend Knight. Well, I'm at work. She would text me cute things such as her repeatedly saying she loves me and waiting for me to come home to cuddle. However, once I got home, she would barely touch me or look at me, which led me to discovery about her and E. Anyways, now we're in June of 2020. Weeks after the incident. At this point, I'm keeping my distance from her, keeping my same work routine while also trying to finish college classes online. She was not working yet, but whenever I came home, it was never cleaned unless I did it. Around this time, she also adopted a mini golden doodle but when we moved in, I brought my Malshi along with us, who she loved dearly until our doodle came around, also giving him the cold shoulder. For the next few months, it's been nothing but the same routine. We tried to talk and go out on dates, but it also ended in silence. Tried to break the ice and see if we can work it out, 
but she never wanted to express herself. Little by little, I felt my love for her going away as it became numb to her treatment towards me. That was until October 2020 when she finally opened up to me. She apologized for her treatment towards me the past few months. We felt like we were both ready to leave the COVID the following month, where she cared for me the way a wife should. She ended up catching it from me once I recovered, and I returned the favor. After that, we started acting more like husband and wife. She finally started getting into my hobbies such as video games, anime, art, and photography. Even coming along with me during my late-night deliveries where we would vibe out to music, and she would help as well. We discovered new things about each other, one on date, and honestly, it felt heartwarming being in her presence again. That spark between us was finally coming back, but I still had a secret grudge against her actions as it was hard to move on from it. All was going good until a few days before Valentine's Day of 2021, where I made another discovery. These past months, I still secretly went through her phone every now and then, but honestly never found anything between her and Eve besides what I already knew. However, I decided this time to take it a step further and look at messages between her and her bestie. Who, why, would constantly send all the gossip to for the long messages and screenshots. Going through the messages made my heart sink even more when I found more details about her and Jay. Turns out that Y and Jay slept together a few days before she asked me for a divorce, and this was actually the true reason for her asking me for a divorce. As I kept reading, turns out Y and Jay had a conversation sometime in October of 2020, I guess, for some closure between them, which is why she finally decided to give us a shot. Oddly enough, I was not surprised this time. I woke her up from her nap and just straight up confided about what I just read in a surprisingly calm tone. Started crying and apologizing about it, and then I just stepped out and went for a drive to clear my mind. Many dark thoughts were going through my head, feeling like I had no one to turn to. For the next few days, I avoided her actions as much as possible. We still slept in the same bed, but there was no physical touch between us. Now on Valentine's Day morning, I get a couple of nudges from her in a cutesy tone asking, what did I plan for her today? Keep in mind, I'm extremely exhausted from work and my deliveries from the whole week. And obviously, I'm still heartbroken. She started crying, saying that I didn't plan anything for her. Once I heard that, I jumped out of bed and began scolding her about how crazy as hell she was to think I would do anything for her after what I just discovered. I yelled at her. She does not deserve anything from me and how our marriage is a total disaster. And you may be wondering why I'm even still with her. Well, at this point in my life, I honestly did not have the energy for anything. I was completely blank. A complete 180 from the person I used to be. I used to be creative, make drawings and paintings, do photography and videography, and always look forward to the next adventure, but I was hollow feeling like what's the point of life? I know I'm stupid for this, but it just felt like it was just easier to hide it from the world. We were already so deep into the marriage life that it felt like there was no going back because if I did, then what would I do now? It was a dead end for me, and I blame myself for relying on her to make me happy despite also making me the saddest. Doesn't mean I forgave her or anything. I just became more numb. So after this discovery, we again entered another period of keeping our distance around April of 2021. She took a trip to Peru with her grandmother. And honestly, I was a little excited to have the place myself for a change. Told my friends the news, and they began showing up to my place frequently while she was away, not knowing what I know. They made me feel like my old self again. Doing our old late nights, shenanigans, and old activities like game nights, watching movies, or just hanging out. I loved the happiness I was getting back, even it was for a moment. At the same time, the lease on our apartment was up by the end of May of 2021, and I began speaking to my father about my possibilities. That same month, my mother went up to Chicago to spend time with family members for the remainder of the year, and my dad came up with the idea of letting me and why stay at their home while he follows her to Chicago. 
I agreed, but why wasn't so enthusiastic about it? However, I didn't need her approval. It was either here or having our rent twice the price from before for another year. I moved back in with my parents to June of 2021. Why is still in Peru, but was returning in the next few weeks? I finally helped at home again. Moving back into my old room and seeing the layout that represented my spirit of youth I once had. I enjoyed my last few weeks of freedom, but I knew this happiness wasn't going to last forever as why I finally returned from her trip for Peru. The next part of the story is where crap really hits the fan, almost costing me my life. Honestly, you weren't that deep in the marriage. It was a year and a half. This woman did you dirty. You've splashed water in her face. She's physically assaulted you. If that's any indication of how this marriage was going to go, time to hit the old dusty trail. Part 3. My soon-to-be ex-wife cheated on me ruining a six-plus-year relationship. Her life is in shambles now, and I'm happy about it. Part 3. Confirmation. Now it's June of July of 2021. Y and I are living at my parents' home. I started a new job in sales and was able to advance pretty quickly to a supervisor role within two to three months. Which paid well enough to afford my dream car. As for my marriage, we had a steady relationship for the remainder of the year. We had our good and bad moments, but overall, it was still a blank feeling I had. I didn't know what I felt towards Y, whether it was anger, sadness, depression. I just felt like the marriage was existing for no reason. By the start of 2022, there was a bit of reconciliation between us, enough for us to start going out on dates again. We opened up more, but we were still wondering where our marriage stood. Everything was seemingly okay until May of 2022, where my life flashed before my eyes. I invited my friends over for a hangout, at my parents' place to watch a boxing match. I told Y about it and stated how it will be only for a few hours and to expect some healing as we get passionate about sports and she was okay with it. As the fight kept going, we kept getting louder and louder. To the point she was angrily texting me to keep the noise down. She would come out to grab snacks or use the bathroom only to keep slamming the door back to the room. After the fight, one of my friend's truck had a dead battery, so I used my car to jump it. While we were jumping it, the four of us kept conversating about another half an hour. While we were talking, automated me through text to come inside repeatedly, to attack text it back that we're finishing up. As I'm just about to head inside, why storms outside the house and head to our car? I asked her everything it was okay, but she had a very serious look on her face, and she angrily pushed me aside. Before leaving to Chicago. My dad installed outdoor solar lights in the front yard. The way Y's car was positioned her only way out was through a grass area that had one of these lights. She revved up her car before she took off. I tried to stop her from running over the light and asked her what was wrong. She paused for about five seconds, then stepped hard on the gas and almost ran me over. I jumped out of the way as fast as I could, getting grazed on my knee. She drove off fast dragging the light beneath her car, scraping the road. I sat on the ground with a surprised look in my face thinking how she just almost ran me over. My friends helped me up and asked if I was okay. I just looked at them in shock, and they offered their help. I told them to just go home while I went back inside. Shaking up from the moment. I kept calling Wise phone to see why she did what she did. I go inside our room and find her phone on the ground unlocked. I graduated the phone for the first time in months. It turns out there were still secrets to find out about why. Turns out Y and J actually had a continuous affair for months. Ranging from March 2020 to October 2020. I finally felt something in my heart and brain to do what needed to be done a long time ago. It's about 2 a.m. I was still freaking out about this incident. I repeatedly called my sister who lives down the road for me about what just happened, but with no response. Y returns and tries to enter the home, but I manage to lock the door with an additional lock. I stink out the back and drive over to my sister's house while hyperventilating his wife pursued me. I get to my sister's house knocking, 
but as while I pulled up in the driveway, I began knocking frantically at my sister's and her husband finally opened the door. This caused Y to back off and drive away. I explained the situation to my sister and cried to her about what just happened and finally opened up about how she cheated on me in the past. It was a hard pill to swallow. I was ready to finally let this marriage go. I asked her to accompany back home to make sure Y doesn't try to hurt me again. When we get there, while I was already packing up her belongings, I kept my distance for about five minutes then asked her to give me back the rings and the keys. She already expected this as she had them in her pocket already gave them to me. She grabbed her suitcase and took out her golden doodle with her. My sister and I talked a bit longer, and then she finally goes home. Then that night was a long one for me. I slept at about 6 a.m., only to be woken up about 7 a.m., to knocking on my window from Y. She spent the remainder of the night in her car and asked if I could at least take back the golden noodle inside. As much as I wanted to, I ignored her knocking. This went on for about 30 minutes. Later on, I reached out and met up with her to talk about the situation. I finally told her about everything I knew and decided it's better for us to separate. She cried and begged me to let us work this out. But I was tired of the emotional and physical abuse all these years, the lies, the heartbreaks, everything. As toxic as it sounds, were followed afterward for why it was actually satisfying as it felt like it was karma for everything she has put me through. I will sound like a dick in the next part, but I believe I deserve a genuine laughter for once. Yikes. How could she expect you to work out anything with her after she tried to run you over and your parents home no less? Part 4. My soon-to-be ex-wife cheated on me, Roni, a six-plus-year relationship. Her life is in shambles now, and I'm happy about it. Part 4. Why moves back in with her mother? but not for long as she does not get along with her stepfather and has too much pride to be living under her mother's roof again. Ends up finding her own place in August of 2022, stating that if I ever wanted to make it work out, I was always welcome to move back in with her. My parents come back from Chicago about a week after we separated. A majority of the furniture in our bedroom was hers as she made me throw out my items, such as my bed and my drawers, and replace them with hers as it looked more classy. Besides the bedroom, we had a couch, tables, kitchen appliances, etc., all boxed away in another room and a house. The day she told me she was coming to take her belongings, my father and I left everything out in the driveway, but did not bother to help them move anything into the truck. She brought along her mother, stepfather, her uncle, and her two aunts, who I would say are not all physically strong people. Her grandma was also there to mostly watch but helps with little things to move. What took my father and I about 30 minutes to move and maneuver out of the house, took them two to three hours to put in a truck. We peeped through the window having a few drinks and laughed about how they were struggling while they were all talking crap about me and my family. I don't know why they included my family, but then again, their family who talks crap about everyone and everything. When Y moved into her apartment, she was working a new job she got through her field of study, which paid well by the hour, but didn't get enough hours. She had too much pride to work a second job as she felt like this was below her. Because of this, she struggled to keep up with her rent, electricity, motor bill, car payments, insurance, etc. She reached out to me a couple of times asking for money, but I refused to help her as I felt like her financial problems had nothing to do with me. Why would try to gaslight me to give her money, saying I shouldn't let her golden doodle suffer along with her? Which I replied that she should go ask her lover for money. I was surprised to learn later on that she told her mother the truth, and her mother took my side and stated she should not be giving her money either. The rest of her family still hated me for not wanting to work it out after she cheated, but their opinions don't matter because none of them remarried themselves. Months went by. We were still legally married. Y agreed to go half on the divorce fees, but did not have the money. During these discussions, she admitted she still had hope for us to work it out. And she still had love for me and believed I love her back. Called me stupid, but I did love her back, but I just knew I couldn't keep playing this game anymore. 
Despite everything she's done to me, it's still hard for me to hate her as this is someone I've grown close with in high school, who's helped me when I was at my lowest point in life, and made me happier than anyone else ever could. Yet she still managed to break me and made me feel like I will never be good enough for anyone ever again. We still have each other on social media and even though she claims to be struggling with money, she always seems to be out every weekend at the clubs. This usually ends up with her drunk, texting, or calling me, stating she was wrong for how she treated me. Whenever I post on my Instagram or Snapchat stories about being out late at night, she's usually the first to see my posts, usually within a minute. She acknowledges that I look happier without her. As of now, I wouldn't say happy, but I do feel like this is freedom. Since moving out, she's gotten into two car accidents just a few months apart. We're no longer on the same insurance together, but she still called me asking if I can financially help her, which I refused and told her she was on her own now. I still had her on my phone plan a few months after, but decided to disconnect her line without letting her know. Once reconnected, she angrily texted me days later, about how she lost her number, and had to get a new phone because her current phone was still locked with my carrier, and she couldn't call to unlock it since I was the account holder. She called me a dick. I couldn't help but laugh about it. I had this ex-girlfriend that I ended off on good terms with. We were friends until wine I got married. When she forced me to cut off my friendship with her, out of fear that my ex would try to get with me again. We started hanging out again, and when Y found out, she swears that I only divorced her to get back with my ex. I had no interest in her after the breakup, only seeing her as a friend at this point, even after Y and I separated. From what I heard from a mutual friend, she tried to get back, E, who now has a girlfriend and a child. She also tried again with J, who now has a girlfriend. Y would sometimes reach out to me about actually still behind on certain bills, would barely eat, almost got evicted twice, and can't afford to care for the gold and doable. If I had to guess, she's most likely getting money from her grandmother. We would still text time to time to figure out a court date or days where I still had to give some leftover stuff from home. She would always say she would never find a guy like me and how much she wishes we could try again and regrets her actions. Part of this made me feel happy for karma. The other part would be feeling sad about how everything led up to this moment. Around March of 2023, we went to court to finally file our divorce. While waiting for our turn, she stepped out in the hall to cry her eyes out while I just sat there not knowing what to think. After about 10 minutes, it's finally our turn and we begin signing away. Ever since then, we just now talk with a few texts once everywhere one to two weeks saying what we have left to say. As for myself, I was promoted to manager a month after we separated. I stayed in this position until November of 2022. As I was overworked to the point of getting no sleep, I was able to find a better paying job, one that I continue to work for to this day. During the marriage, I've gained weight from overeating to help cope with my depression. I've been going back to the gym, but need to work on getting a routine. I had big plans with my friends for the summer and myself for later this year. It's now June of 2023. I wouldn't say life is perfect. But whenever I'm having a bad day, I think about how wise life is basically falling apart now ever since we've parted ways. Makes me feel like she deserves to feel what I felt for six plus years. I'm in a hole for thinking this way about her, but at least my life is finally going the right direction and hopefully continues this way and she could see how happy I could be without her. You're not in a hole for thinking that way. She played you like a drum throughout your marriage and took advantage of the fact that you were young and in love. She only ever wanted to work it out when things were going bad for her. She needed you far more than you needed her up. It's time to let her go. Epilogue. This is my last post about this just for a few clarifications. I had to cut the section out of part 4 to be able to post it. If there's any other questions, I can try and answer them as well. The history of Y and I dates back to our high school days. There's more details about how Y and I first met up to the point where we got married. Looking back on it, we always had a toxic relationship, 
but that's not to say it was all bad as we had our great moments as well. As for how our boyfriend, girlfriend, relationship point, and why I married her, I'll explain that another time if necessary. I appreciate the feedback, both good and bad. Like I said before, I was a dummy who thought everything would magically work out. I don't know if I would call this outcome a win for me, but at least I can finally start over now. To the readers to think this is made up, I don't have the time or capability to come up with a story like this. I'm posting my experience as a way for me to get this off my chest. I'm not the best when it comes to expressing myself in person, and Reddit probably isn't the best place to do it. By posting here with other people who had similar experiences, made it easier for me. But thanks for still actually reading all these long posts. Sadly, this isn't my first rodeo. There's a relationship I had before this that broke me and made me who I am today. Sounds dramatic, but that's the best way to put it. I'm open to talking about it one day. Divorce update. For those who don't know the story, I have several posts about my wife and I, on my page, if you want to read it. I apologize for the long posts if you do. Anyways, today I'm going to court to meet up with my wife who we're calling Y. She texted me on Monday, June 26th. To remind me, we have a court today, June 30th. Yesterday, she gave me one more reminder, and I also asked her for a few things I still had left from her. I asked for some things as well. We still have each other on social media where we still see each other's stories. I don't snoop or anything. I just happen to see it when I'm seeing other stories. I suppose she has a sort of new boyfriend now or at least is working up to it as she's been posting text messages between her and the same guy. I don't think it's to get me jealous or anything. But knowing her, she likes the attention from other people as she did the same thing when her and I were becoming a thing. But I don't feel any jealousy or hate towards her. I'm actually relieved she's moving on. The way I see it, someone else is taking over my old problems. They have no idea what type of hell they're getting into. All I can say is good luck. They're going to need it. As for court, I actually feel excited about it. I can continue to move on with my life, and she can finally be out of the picture. She'd stated that even after divorce, we can still be friends, mostly because of the golden doodle we have together. Despite me loving that dog, I have to let this all go. After we finalize everything, I will block her on everything so I don't have to see her or hear about her again. As for myself, I haven't tried to meet anyone new. I don't really have it in me to try again. Main thing holding me back is the trust issues and my own insecurities. Usually, when I've been in a relationship, it's always been the female that made the first move on me, including why. I should really change that though. But for right now, my main focus is work and bills that I'm close to paying off. One of my friends is now training me at the gym. So far, I've lost 10 pounds. My friend group and I are going on our summer trip next week. We have multiple locations to stop by within our state. So, yeah, life is good so far, and I'll try to update how the court went afterwards. The voice update too. Sorry for the late update. I've been working overtime like crazy, but today I have time. On Friday, June 30th, we get to the courthouse and wait for our turn with the clerk. After, like, three minutes, we get called and there's only one chair for us to sit down. I take the chair for myself, and even though I'm not looking at her, I can feel why staring at me hard. She says can I lease it down? To which I respond, then grab a chair, and she just says whatever and stands up. We explain the reason for the divorce. We're not fighting for anything, just simply separating. A couple of times. The lady had to walk back and forth or type something into the computer. During those moments, she would say little remarks like she can't wait to get rid of me. That it was me who trapped her into a marriage, and that I never satisfied her, etc. Not to sound cocky, but I know she was saying most of that stuff to mask what she really felt. I know this because she followed up that she hopes I, I have fun with my ex. Who were still friends. But like I said before. I have no interest in because she swears I'm in love with. While we kept going back and forth, the clerk was trying so hard not to laugh. 
we pay the fee, and now we just have one more court date in one to two months. It was raining when we walked out. So we still discussed a few things. Main thing she asked if I could watch her golden noodle in August while she goes on her trip out of the country. I said not possible for me. And she followed that I'm a deadbeat dog dad and that I will never see him again and left. Here's the kicker. Yesterday, I asked if I can watch the golden doodle for today. To which I can't because I work today. Even though it's the 4th of July. And also, today is her birthday. She won't be getting a happy birthday for me, though. Also, her family does not celebrate birthdays, especially her mother and stepfather because they're both Jehovah's Witnesses. Her only real option is her best friend who's most likely going to do something with her boyfriend rather than why. So, yeah, I'm at work waiting two more days before vacation. Nothing really different going on from the last update. Happy the 4th of July. I think she projects the fact that you're the one leaving her onto you. The little comments are a way of her trying to mask the fact that she threw your marriage into a meat grinder. You guys were young when you both came together, and unfortunately, she just never grew up. I'm not sure she really had the faintest idea about what a marriage was. She was quick to try to throw you to the curb when she started cheating on you, discarding the love she claimed to have had for you. Until she realized the perks of having a husband or a doormat who will take her back whenever she begs and pleads, and you just kept taking the hits and taking her back. I'm glad you finally uncovered your self-worth. Now don't look back. What do you make it this hot mess? Let us know below. And thank you for joining us today on our space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. See you next time.